Hey everybody, this week I want to do another method book review. Last time I looked at Barry Galbraith's comping book, and I did a couple videos on that, but this time I want to look at Andrew Green's comping book entitled Jazz Comping, Raising Your Chord Awareness. Okay, let's jump right into it. Andrew's book provides many tools and concepts that can help you in your comping journey. I would say first off that this book is made for people who already have a idea on how comping and comping functions in jazz music. I do like what Andrew says in the forward for his book though. Andrew states, while this book provides many of the tools necessary to comp efficiently, it needs to be emphasized that the comper's craft is one developed chiefly by listening and playing. The single most important thing you can do to develop comping skills is play as much as possible. With Andrew's words in mind, let's look at some of the tools he presents us in his comping book. Okay, so the book is divided into two main sections, chord construction and rhythm. Let's look at chord construction first. He starts out by showing us some of the basic fundamental voicings used in jazz comping. Again, if you're new to comping, and this is all new to you, I would recommend checking out my comping for uh, beginners that gets you really into the jazz comping and kind of breaks down the whole process before checking out the rest of this video. After he shows you some fundamental chord grips, then he goes on to the first topic in this section, uh, being voice leading. This is when you have one note, or voice, in your chord that moves through the changes in a stepwise motion. Here are a couple examples from Andrew's book that demonstrate this tool of voice leading. As you can see, for most of the time, the seventh of the two chord moves to the third of the dominant chord, and that's what creates our voice leading. Once you get the hang of basic voice leading, then we can start to add other notes to our chord. Andrew gives us an example of this by showing us a chord progression based off of B-flat blues that has voice leading in the middle of the chords as well as on the top note of the chords as well. Andrew also shows us that voice leading can happen on multiple notes as well. This is a more advanced take on the voice leading topic. For this type of comping, it's better, I would say, to memorize this stuff uh, beforehand and work it out beforehand instead of trying to uh, improvise this way on the spot. So treat these almost as chord licks. Here are a couple examples from Andrew's book for multiple note voice leading. Lastly, Andrew shows us that you can voice lead with something called common tones between chords. This just means that one note of our chord works with another note in our chord progression and it holds over into that next chord. Usually this is done with the top voice of whatever chord you're doing. Here are some examples from Andrew's book. For the sake of not showing everything in Andrew's book, I'm going to jump ahead and focus on his section about rhythm. There's so many other topics in his chord construction category though. If you want me to do a part two and kind of dig deeper into some other topics that he talks about, let me know in the comment section below. If you like the content that's coming from his book, make sure and support him directly by purchasing the book. You can find a link to do that in the description of this video. For the rhythmic portion of this video, I want to cover two topics that Andrew covers in his book, that being anticipation and delay, and also lawn and short notes. For anticipation and delay, Andrew points out that if you're comping and you're always hitting downbeats, it's going to be really predictable and boring. The first thing that you can do to fix this is throw in anticipations. So if you had this, <laughs> 
you could instead play the chords in eighth note before the downbeat. You could also do this the opposite way and delay the chords by an eighth note. Then mix and match them. Remember, as Andrew also points out, you can change the length of the notes as well. You can make all your chords short. Or you can make them all on. It's always best to mix these up though and try to listen to what the soloist is doing and respond to the soloist. Okay, so to combine what we talked about with the different types of voice leading, as well as the rhythmic anticipations, delays, and making notes long and short, I want to play a copying etude under the great melody of I Should Care. This is going to feature my friend and great colleague Chris Glassman on the trombone. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel, as well as his other uh, materials on his website, uh, which you can find in the description of this video. Thanks for watching this brief dive into Andrew Green's comping book. Remember to purchase his book and you can further check out all the great information that he provides to you. If you want me to do a part two to this, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Also remember to check out my other comping videos to further get more information on this topic. Also, if you like the content that I'm putting out, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it helps the channel immensely. And I don't ask you to hit like or subscribe till the very end of the video. So maybe sub for that. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, remember to always keep swinging.